There is a place in Zimbabwe that some would call a paradise, a thirst-quenching haven of relief. This place gives life to thousands. But do not be deceived, for around every corner lurks a threat. And behind every shadow lies danger. Here stands a gladiator's battleground. turns dry, this special spring offers the chance of survival. But taking that chance risks a deadly price. In this dry season, who will stand and who will fall? In the place they call the Predator's Playground. The mighty Zambezi forms the northern border of Zimbabwe, but its sparkling thread tells nothing of its hidden dramas. Our story starts some 30 kilometers south of this mighty river. Here there is a special place, an ever-flowing spring bubbling up from a dry riverbed. Never more than two inches deep, the sweet water flows downstream for a kilometer before seeping back into the sand. Every dry season, when all the land around is parched, this spring becomes a lifeline. But while it has been the savior of many animals, it has also lured others to their death. Big predators have stalked this place for centuries, Today, in these ancient sediments remain the footprints of dinosaurs. Claws this size suggest these beasts were carnivores. This place is still the playground of the super predators, the lions. But what is it that makes this such a dangerous arena to enter? The steep-sided sections of the riverbed are nearly 200 meters long. Quick exits are impossible up these sandy slopes. It is one of the most dangerous gauntlets for any animal to run. In this arena of death, the alley cats reign supreme. These sweet spring waters will yet run rancid with decaying flesh. This season, over 1,000 buffalo will rely on this oasis for their daily water source. Buffalo will defend themselves at all costs. With confidence in their numbers, their weight, their lethal horns and hooves, any lion will have to think twice before taking on these tanks of the bush. Thirst may be their driving force, but survival is their ultimate aim. Two rival families of lions now dominate this area. The Kavinga pride and the Mazunga pride. Ten years ago, a magnificent male, Kavinga, ruled this spring. His favored lioness, Mara, bore him three cubs, two males and a little female called Sapi. Sapi remained close to her mother's side, and as she grew, saw many hunts and learned many hunting techniques. Sapi soon discovered that buffalo were formidable opponents. 
Their deadly horns and incredible strength claimed or maimed many of her pride. Sapi, in her turn, had two cubs of her own, a boy called Shiduma and a girl called Moya. Three months later, Sapi's sister also gave birth to a boy called Moto. Today, they are starting to develop as a successful hunting foursome, becoming familiar with every nook and cranny in the spring. At nine years old, there's no mistaking Sapi with her distinctive grey nose. Her hunting skills are finely tuned, and with each dry season, her offspring are learning more from her deadly prowess. Chiduma, her three-and-a-half-year-old son, is starting to become more independent. Although he has much to learn in the art of patience, he has the tenacity and will to take on giants. His sister Moya may be smaller, but is a regular participant in the hunts. She still tends to stay on the outskirts of the action. This season, she needs to hone her hunting skills. Then there's three-year-old Morto, which means fire. He has the true heart of a gladiator. But will his spirit make up for his small frame? This dry season, young Morto needs to take on a bigger role in the hunts. The rival Mazunga pride are also growing in strength. The three adult lionesses have five cubs between them. What's more, they are protected by a formidable duo of brothers, Dombo and Kutsamwa. The Mazunga Pride have the makings of a deadly strike unit, if they can work together as a team. The Kavinga Pride have developed a cunning tactic to stay ahead of their rivals. Tree climbing. A post in the branches provides each line with a perfect lookout point, and in the heat of the day, a cool place to rest. From August to November, the inland waterholes dry up. The thousands of animals have little choice but to trek to this spring. The Mazunga and Kavinga prides know this well and settle in for the dry season. And so the stage is set. In the coming onslaught, just what will it take for the prey to outwit these groups of predators? And who will have fallen by the time the rains come again? It's morning at the spring. Suddenly, the blue sky above turns gold and clouds over with dust. It's a signal that heralds the arrival of one of the spring's great spectacles. A herd of over 400 buffalo. After the vigil of the long night, the lure of water urges the thirsty animals on. The leader's senses are on full alert. They test the wind, nervous of the steep shoots above the spring. The Kavinga pride is also on full alert. They haven't eaten for days. This may be the best opportunity they've had in a while. The scent of the Kavinga pride has been detected early. The buffalo pause. They ponder the eruptions. Driven by their thirst, the giant beasts jostle and push. And so, despite the presence of Sapi and the Kavinga pride, the leaders throw caution to the wind. The herd starts down the steep sandy chutes to the water.
It's not long before warning cries go up from the resident troop of baboons. This troop and its alarm calls are a constant irritation to the lions. The buffalo react. They create a pincer formation surrounding their young. This morning, they will not stay long before climbing out of the spring. Zapi has decided to pursue the herd, perhaps looking for an opportunity of weakness. Without the backup of the rest of her pride, she won't be able to make a kill, but her determination is evident. In numbers, it's the buffalo that have the advantage. Sapi is forced to retreat. <laughs> Left behind at the spring is a trio of old buffalo bulls. These old males are known as dagger boys. They may be too slow to keep up with the rest of the herd. But big cats, beware. These old warriors have degrees in the behavior of lions. Dagger boys spend their final years together. Wisdom is their last defense against the would-be attackers. It's a second chance for Sapi and the Kavinga pride. Their best tactic is to try and drive the dagger boys up one of the steepest chutes. Here, the loose sand will hinder a quick escape. Sapi chooses her target. Chiduma positions himself on the flank. Then Sapi starts the chase. The isolated dagger boy's best method of defense is attack. The old bull faces the Kavinga lions head on. Scrambling up the steep chute, his hooves sink into the soft sand. The lines close in on him. With brute strength and a rotating bucking action, the dagger boy takes the fight to the Kavingas. and excitement has drawn three females from the rival Mazunga pride. Against all odds, this tough old tank survives. His tail may be bitten off, but the lions are forced to withdraw. The dagger boy looks on defiantly. Defeated, the Kavinga pride regroups. They rest in the thick bushes on the bank. They cannot afford to miss opportunities like this. They need to work out a successful team strategy. It's a problem 
The younger members of the Pride are clearly still inexperienced. A herd of Impala coming down to drink attract the attention of Sapi and Chiduma. The Kavingas will have no advantage on the higher and harder ground. They need the Impala to be on the soft sand of the riverbed to have any chance. Impala hooves are narrow, they sink in the sand, but lion paws play wide, they will have the advantage giving chase. It's young Chiduma who starts the charge, but he strikes too early. Sapi tries to back him up, but it's too late. Sapi sees a second impala herd at the spring. And there's a bonus, young Kudu are also drinking. Kudu are larger than impala. They will give a greater return on the Kavinga's invested energy. Sapi quickly targets a young male. The Kudu takes flight through the narrow gorge. It's perfect for Sapi, but a death trap for the Kudu, struggling in the muddy waters. Sapi strikes. Sapi may have been alone on the hunt, but she's joined on the kill by Moya. The Mazunga pride is growing in strength. The cubs are starting to learn the art of hunting. Today, the youngsters are enjoying a play session. Warthog and Impala come down to the spring. The Warthog love these muddy moments. It's the ideal time for the Mazunga lions to take up their tactical positions. The happy pigs are oblivious to the danger. It's the impala and baboons that pick up the threat. The choreography of this hunt looks good. The strategy to flank the warthog is clear. One Mazunda lioness takes her position on the side of the chute while from the base of the spring, another initiates the chase. It's first light. The Kavinga pride are alert. A massive buffalo herd arrives for its early morning drink. The cats were outwitted in the hunt last time. They felt the brute force of these animals. But an opportunity or a weakness could present itself today. Sapi has found the perfect spot, concealed in the shade on the left bank of the spring. Moya, Moto, and Chiduma have settled in positions above her. A lioness from the rival Mazunga pride is also taking an interest in the developing situation. She's watching from the opposite bank. Is she thinking of joining the Kavingas in the hunt or leading her own pride to a possible kill? The resident baboons are anxious once again. The alarm calls put the buffalo on the alert.
Some stragglers have been left behind. One of them looks injured. Wounded in a fight amongst the herd, perhaps. Once again, it's Sapi who leads the attack. The bull may be injured, but the Kavinga's only hope of success is to surround him, harass him, and attack from behind. Shiduma latches onto a leg, hoping to anchor the bull, making it easier for the other lions to take him down. Sapi and her pride seem to tolerate the single female from the Mazungas. Perhaps they understand that more numbers might work to their advantage. An inevitable fate seems to await the defeated buffalo. His distressed bellows are heard by two other bulls. Can these reinforcements undermine the lion's confidence? For the game of predator versus prey is just as much a mental as a physical battle. The injured bull looks likely to escape, but the balance of power changes yet again. The Kavingas try to block him off, and Chiduma launches another attack. Sapi now takes her opportunity. She reinforces Chiduma's grip. And now the dance of death is all about timing. Sapi waits for the perfect moment to land the killer blow. The suffocation grasp. Sapi is cutting off the buffalo's air supply. This tank of the bush is starting to weaken. Slowly, the suffocating bull surrenders. Once grounded, it's just a matter of time.
Sapi releases her death hold. The Kavinga Pride's team tactics have made this a successful hunt. This kill should boost their hunting confidence and serve them well for the rest of the dry season. Temperatures in the Zambezi Valley begin to soar in October. The need for water increases. It takes just one herd of buffalo drinking from the spring for the water to be drained. Miraculously, after just a few hours, the spring flows freely again. The tactical advantage is turning towards the two lion prides. Evidence of their kills is now scattered all around the spring. Young elephants are the most vulnerable now. But even the powerful buffalo are beginning to weaken. As the surrounding vegetation dwindles over the next two months, the Kavinga and Mazunga prides will be presented with even more opportunities. The dry season drags on. Food and water are becoming scarce. Tempers are becoming frayed within the buffalo herd. Aggression is now the order of the day. For the Kavingas, these battles must serve as a reminder of just how powerful and just how dangerous these buffalo can be. The dust and noise has alerted Sapi and her pride. They come down from the trees and start to stalk their prey. The buffalo are on away at first, but not for long. The threat from Sapi and her pride is spotted. The buffalo start to make their exit. Experienced youngsters Moto and Moya line up a calf and try their luck. It's a big mistake. The tables are now quickly turned. The buffalo become the aggressors. Moto and Moya now have to make their escape. Moya is in serious danger at the top of the bank. She holds her ground bravely. In the scramble to get up the chutes, one buffalo falls injured. Two bulls loyally return to investigate. 
but soon leave the tragic scene. The Kavinga Pride may have failed in their hunt, but the spring lives and breathes by its own set of rules. Today, the Kavingas are presented with an easy meal. The Kavinga and Mazunga prize are not the only predators roaming here. This spring is also home to wild dogs. A pack this size needs to kill often to feed all its members. They prefer the cool of dawn and dusk to hunt. strategies are legendary, but today the pack doesn't form a cohesive unit. With just one dog chasing the kudu, the antelope makes her escape. Resting up in the riverbed, the dogs are caught napping. A lone buffalo comes down to drink. Their delicate limbs are vulnerable to the power of this formidable beast. The dogs wisely leave the buffalo alone. They don't have long to wait for their next opportunity. A herd of impala begin to stream in. The chase begins. With so many animals on offer, the dogs are virtually guaranteed a meal. Speed and endurance are the dogs' great strengths. It's not long before they run their prey down. They make short work of the carcass, stripping it to the bone. Then regurgitating the kill for their young. As the day heats up, increasing numbers of impala make their way to water. The Mazunga pride look on with interest. It's the impala rutting season. The dominant males are challenging each other for the right to mate. It's an exhausting time, and their attention is focused on these battles. Perfect opportunity for the Mazunga Pride to attack. They start to position themselves at strategic flanking points.
Even the cabs are joining in on this hunt. But they have little experience in timing. As always, it's the baboons who give the first warning. The spring erupts as the animals panic. The lead lioness begins the chase along the spring. She drives the impalas toward the chute where the ambushes have been set. For the Mazunga pride, the tactics of this hunt have worked perfectly. Sapi and the Kavinga Pride are also after a meal today and positioned under cover at the edge of the spring. This time they focus on the warthog who are unaware of the threat. The pigs wander unwittingly past the concealed Kavinga lions. With a lightning turn of speed, the hogs escape. Sapi has failed to direct the warthogs up the slippery embankment where she would have had the advantage. With ineffective backup from her young pride members, such chases will always be unsuccessful. All four lions need to work together using the topography of the spring to gain the advantage. It's early November. The familiar sound of the red-billed ox peckers heralds the arrival of yet another buffalo herd. With months of dust in their throats, they now simply ignore the unmistakable smell of the Kavinga lines. There are many young calves here today. It's not long before Sapi singles one out.
the baboons send up their warning cries. But dreadful thirst delays the herd. They turn to leave the spring too late. This time, all four Kavinga lines act as one. Together, they drive the buffalo towards a very steep chute. The calf is taken by Sapi. A female buffalo, perhaps its mother, bravely sweeps her horns at Sapi and Moya. But this only serves to injure the calf. A powerful bull returns to charge the Kavinga lions, but they cannily position the calf between them. It's the young buffalo who bears the brunt of the bull's courageous attack. Young Morto now takes the initiative. He suffocates the calf. Today marks a timely milestone for Sapi's son. This is the first time Morto has dealt the death blow. Sapi has achieved her goal. Her family is working together. The Kavinga pride has become a cohesive, lethal unit at last. In these final days of the dry season, the temperatures in the Zambezi Valley soar. The heat and aridness makes life unbearable. The predator's job is at its easiest now. The prey need to walk vast distances to find food. They return exhausted to the spring. It is hardest for the elephants. They need huge amounts of food to fuel their inefficient digestive systems. The fate of this young bull, abandoned by its weary mother, is commonplace. Alone and exhausted, he finally collapses. The predators now rule the playground. Just as all energy seems spent, massive clouds gather. At last, the long-awaited rains return. One big storm and the spring starts to flood. Slowly, the recovery of the valley's plant and animal life begins. The spring has done its duty over this dry season. The Kavinga and Mazunga prides must now journey further afield to eat. They must follow the herds of buffalo deep into the lushness of the Zambezi Valley. Only the resident baboon troops remain, waiting for the return of the great herds and their predators when the dry season comes once more. There is no emotion to this epic struggle played out in these last remaining wild places. It is about survival and the continuation of species whose lives entwine as they have done for so many years. In this dry season, this place has saved the lives of thousands of animals. It has offered up its life-giving water, hosted many dramas, seen many acts of courage 
and witness the ebb and flow of tactics as Predator tries to outwit prey. Now, this place must rest, replenish, and revive before once again it becomes the Predator's Playground.